Welcome to Magazine of the World, an international program about human rights and geopolitical analysis. I am Juan Carlos Vallejo. After a long time break, I returned to TV and radio. I was in my winter headquarters. But two girls, two mm, fantastic women, two Maria del Pilar in Colombia and Claire in Canada. I back, I think it's important, it's necessary when we are facing a very, very hard situation with the journalists. I want to dedicate this program and all the programs for a good friend who passed last week, like political prisoner in Ukraine. His name, Gonzalo Lira, 55 years old, starting only in his life. Very strong, very brave man, good journalist, perfect analysis. And he was there covering the war between NATO and Russia. Unfortunately, the US government and Chilean government, because he have uh, both citizenship, they don't open the mouth to protect his life, his physical integrity, and he passed last week. I am very, very sorry about that situation. I hope the US government do something, start an investigation, a deeply investigation uh, about what happened in, with Gonzalo <coughs> uh, because He's an American citizen. He born in the United States. And he have the Chilean citizenship because his father and mother are from Chile. But he is an American citizen. He's a journalist. And how is possible some media hold on, on his around his neck the grave stone uh, saying that he was pro Putin? He was a journalist. He was reporting what he saw in his opinion, his political opinion, what, what he was uh, seeing in, 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 in the area when he was living in Yarkov. And he was a prisoner. Many US media uh, say that he was pro Putin and that was the reason he was arrested, tortured, and we received the bad news that he died. And I dedicate all this program in all my programs for a good friend of mine that was Gonzalo Lira. When I was a student at the University for Journalists, Law School, uh, Social Communications, Political Science, we have an important book, La Rumor. La Rumor is a book about the rumors, how the rumors are created. What is the intention of the rumors? When a rumor can to be uh, investigated if it's true or no. Sometimes the rumors are intentionally released to produce some effects. For example, overthrow the government or sometimes are true, yeah? Sometimes I'm true, and, 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 and you say, oh, I hear some rumor, da, 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 and immediately at the end, it's true. That's a brilliant analysis. It's a very old book, but I recommend you have the possibility to read. It's very important because the news that we have about the situation with the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, uh, was a surprise for us. When I received from sources in Ukraine and Russia the version that he was wounded, that was the rumor. Immediately I start to talk with some people and say, okay, do you have this confirmation? I have the information that he was wounded in, in Ukraine. And I start to verify when he was there, it was more or less in November 20th, he had a meeting, online meeting, with the allies of the members of NATO who were involved in the, the war in, against Russia. And 
and he is in the meeting, he back, supposedly he back because I don't have the video, but I, I, I was reading the transcript, the, the official transcript of his meeting with the people. It was November 22nd, more or less. And after I received the news that he was wounded, I said, but when he was, he back to Ukraine, because supposedly he was at the Pentagon attending that meeting online, but, but when you are attending something online, you don't need to be in the place. It's very strange, the silence of the government, the silence of the Pentagon about what is the real situation of General Austin because that's not normal. He's a funcionary. The, supposedly the president had no idea that he was sick for the problem of the prostatic cancer. And I believe it would be very important if the, the Pentagon of the government shows a video and what is the real situation of the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd, Lloyd Austin because the rumor is there. The rumor is still there. Doesn't matter that the government or the hospital or the Pentagon say that he have a procedure because, okay, show a video of what is the real situation of the General Austin. That's only the, we request. That's all, to, to clarify everything. The Congress is start to make questions now. How is possible? that a funcionary, that very important is the, the Secretary of Defense, how is it possible, possible that a, a very important funcionary, uh, he doesn't say anything about his medical procedure. And he is still, supposedly he is still in the hospital. It's very important to avoid the, the rumor, the rumors the government the Pentagon, the same Department of Defense, clarify what is the real situation of the Secretary of Defense, General Lloyd Austin. Uh, another topic that we have for today is the situation with Zelensky. Years ago, when the conflict in Ukraine started, it was very famous portrait and many front page and newspapers, magazines, the news open with him, person of the year, like a picture that I show you, person of the year, famous. Right now, very low profile. Some people say right now, he is obstacles for the plans of the NATO in Ukraine and they want to change for another person. And that is the price that he need to pay for what he did. He was used by the military industrial complex to involve the people in Ukraine, innocent people in Ukraine, innocent people in Russia, innocent people in Donbass in a stupid war. Men, women, adult people, children die, thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And what is the result of that? The result is the Ukraine is losing territory. Ukraine, right now, the owner of Ukraine, part of the owner is BlackRock. It's buying many land in Ukraine. The same situation that we have no in a war, but in an economic crisis in Greece. Remember, 2008 around, practically Greece is not for the, the Greece people. It's sold for all the big corporations. And that's the situation right now in Ukraine. A lot of land, the owner right now is BlackRock. And for people in Ukraine, what? Nothing. Right now, the draft is for women and men. And every day, of course, the mainstream media here in, 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 in the Western countries, hi, 
but we have sources in many other places. Gonzalo Lira was a big source to talk about what happened and the war since 2014, when really started the, the, the conflict. A thousand of Ukrainians dying. It's, it's a fight between a small country, a, a country with an army, with a power against a big country like Russia, like, like a continent with experience in many wars. It was practically a suicide. And for the military industrial complex, that's not important. The important is to sell guns, weapons, ammunition, and after take the territory to sell for the best business that they have. And that's the situation right now with Zelensky. Now they don't need any more that guy, and they want to put another new puppet to use and sell the country for the international market. Odessa is a port, famous port in Ukraine. For the military, the point why Russia, right now, this is a fortune for Ukraine and NATO, why Russia is not taking the control of Odessa. The day when the Russians took the decision to take Odessa, the war is over because this is the most important port in Ukraine. And this is the only place where they are receiving uh, food, uh, uh, some guns, weapons, ammunition, uh, international aid. What happened in Russia, unfortunately right now they are not thinking about, but what happened the day when Russia take control of Odessa, of that area, that is not Donbass, that area is separate. For me, it's an important question. Why the Russians are holding to take that, that control, the control of the Odessa port? It's a, a question for me. But many international analysts spe specialize in military issues, they say, when Russia take the control of Odessa, the war is over because it's the most important port for Ukraine. Palestine. We know what happened in Palestine. Thousands of children assassinated. People in Israel assassinated too. Uh, the Hamas, we know the story of the Hamas. Who created the Hamas? What was the intention to create the Hamas? We know that. We know very well. You talk with the Palestinians, they recognize the Hamas was created with the intention to destroy the Organization for the Liberation of Palestine when Yasser Arafat was there. That was the, the original idea to create Hamas. That now probably is divided. Yeah, two, two Hamas. One in pro the Palestinian people, but the other no. And practically the civilians at the Gaza Strip, they were prisoners of that radical group of Hamas. Because call our attention that Netanyahu have the people of Israel on the streets requesting the resignation. The people were pushing for a trial against Netanyahu for corruption. Thousands and thousands of Israeli people were on the streets. And in one moment, the attack. The Mossad had no idea about the attack. Now we know that they knew that. The CIA have no idea about the attack. We know now that they knew that. Egypt warned about the attack. And Israel don't put attention about that. And it's very important to investigate what was the role, what role played the government of Netanyahu in that attack. Because was important for him to move the attention of the 
public opinion in Israel and the world for a war and no for his problems with the corruption and he was close to fall in jail or maybe in a trial to overthrow his government. But now the attention is about the war, the war where Palestinians and Israel people are losing their lives, their houses, and in and, and a war nobody is the winner. The corporations, yes, the military industrial complex who sell weapons, guns, ammunition, that are the winners. And color attention, talking about that, is, for example, when Netanyahu was speaking at the United Nations, he showed a map he called the New Middle East. And that New Middle East was not Palestine, was only the map of Israel. And the New Middle East is a business with gas, oil, and to make a canal, a new canal, that is not the Suez Canal, is another canal, alternative canal they are planning to make. But they don't need Palestine there because is, this canal is in the territory of the Gaza Strip and part of the West Bank. And Ben Gurion Canal is one of the plans that Netanyahu is pushing in favor of Israel, but not in favor of the Palestinian people. How is possible now the government of Israel, because again, I need to separate that government from the people in Israel, because the people in Israel were on the streets requesting the resignation of the trial against Netanyahu. And this guy is planning to build a new canal where cross for the territory, this, the remains of the territory of Palestine. Palestine lose territory every time with Israel. And right now, practically only West Bank and Gaza Strip disappear everything. The Palestinian people right now, they have no territory because Gaza is destroyed and West Bank every time is under attack by the, the, the colonial people in, in, who pretend to take off their land for them. And now they propose, and the government of Netanyahu move the people of Palestinian, Palestinian people to Congo in Africa or to Egypt. They don't need that. They don't want that. And that is a big problem. And I don't believe Netanyahu will move a finger to allow the return of the Palestinians to the Gaza Strip. That is the hard situation. And the United States can to do more in favor of, of both people because some people say we need the recognition of the Palestine, Palestine state. Yes, correct. But we need the recognition of the Israel state too. Because many countries around Israel, they not recognize Israel like a state. That is another truth. Don't be afraid to speak about Israel, about the conflict between Palestine and Israel. Don't be afraid when some people, fanatics, start to call you and to say you are anti-Semitic. I recommend to understand Israel, I recommend two books. The first book that I recommend is this one, The Lobby, The Israel Lobby, by John Merschheimer and Stephen Walt. Fletcher Free Library in Burlington, and the uh, library in South Burlington. This is from South Burlington Library. You can find that very easy. I recommend to understand how the Israel lobby works. It's very important to read, to understand how that works, how the lobby works. Don't be afraid. This is no anti-Semitic. 
Another book that must be a mandatory for all students in political science is a book about the Jewish, the invention of the Jewish people. That book explained clearly how this concept of Semitic works. And not all Jewish are Semitic. Like not all Arabs are Muslim. And explain very clearly who is, for example, the, who are the Ashkenazis, the Sephardis, the Hazars, that are members of the Israel community, but they are not Semitics. And not all Jewish are Semitics, and not all Arabs are Muslims. And this is very important to understand, and that's why I recommend that book. It was a bestseller in Israel. Unfortunately, it's not easy to find out. I don't know why, why they not made new editions, but the book is very important to read. It was bestseller in Israel, and I recommend this book, Shalom Sand. Shalom San. Explain very clearly what it means, the expression Semitic, and who is and who is not Semitic. Very important to understand Israel, to, to speak with arguments, with evidence about what is Israel. Again, it's no, we cannot put together in the same package the people in Israel who were in the streets requesting the resignation of Netanyahu, that many people support the, 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 the existence of the both states, Palestine and Israel. We cannot put together what the government is doing right now in the Gaza Strip, because we have many innocent people there in Israel who was victim of this attack from Hamas. And why the government have no idea about what happened there? Is really, is it true that they have no idea about the attack when Egypt warned it days before, when the, we know now the Mossad knew about that, have a suspicious about that, and the CIA? That's very strange. And I believe it was a dark play from the Israel government allowed that, that, that attack to change the public opinion and move the attention for that situation and no for the corruption of the government. The new Middle East is create a canal, a Ben Gurion canal, and export with a pipeline oil and gas to Europe. They don't need Palestine there. It's not on the map that Netanyahu showed uh, uh, the United Nations. It's no Palestine there. It's only Israel. And it's clear what is the intention. Of course, you cannot see this analysis in the mainstream media in the United States because they have fear for, to say that. But if you read this book, The Israel Lobby, and you read the book about the, the Jewish people, the invention of the Jewish people, you will understand what I'm talking about. And you have no fear to say that because you understand clearly that it's no anti-Semitic express an opinion and analysis about what is the situation between Palestine and Israel. Another important topic that we need to talk is Africa. What is the situation in Africa right now? In 1884, Africa was divided like a cake. All Europe divide Africa. This part is for Spain, this part is for Italy, this part is for Germany, this other part is for France. They divide like it was a cake. Doesn't matter the people. And they start to explode that countries like the colonies to take the natural resources, to be rich with the natural resources from Africa. 
but the people in Africa still is very poor. And of course, came another country, the name is China, and came Russia with another style. Of course, they are taking money from Africa, but they have another proposal. Is we make investment in your territory, and I will take part of the natural resources. I win, you win. It was different with the European colonization and the US colonization it was very different. So they don't give anything for the Africans. And the poverty in Africa is terrible. In a rich continent, a very rich continent, with people, beautiful people, very high educated people, very nice people, very, very warmly people, very friendly people. But in a misery. And now, in Niger, for, a friend, for example, uh, military, national militaries say, no, enough. Get out from here, the friends. Friends, get out from here. No more exploitation. The natural resources is for us, and we will use our natural resources to make business and to give more, much better situation for the people in Niger. And that's the situation is happening in many countries in Africa. They say enough is enough. And that's why many social movements, many social movements start the emancipation, rebellions against the colonization from Europe. Divided Africa like a cake. You see on the map. In that map, the Africa, you see divided. And after uh, Europeans say, why the, immigra the immigrants, the Africans came to Europe? Oh, what do you want? What do you do? You destroy their countries. You make miserable the lives for many Africans, and you don't want to see them in, Af in, in Europe? Come on. What happened when we warned it? At that time, I had my, my, my program. I warned about the war in Libya. I said, that is a mistake. This was a big mistake, the war in Libya, because Libya was practically the, the wall between Africa and Europe. In Libya, many Africans were working as students, because Libya have a very high level of life for many people, it was a very rich country, the oil. And I say, I remember very well, I have a documentary about that. It was a mistake to destroy Libya. Kill Gaddafi is a big mistake. And the consequence, Africans, they cannot find any place to work. They cannot find a, a better life inside the continent. What do you want? They need to find a better place to live, to survive. And that's why they are moving for different countries, like refugees. You make miserable their lives, and you don't want to see them? What happened in Latin America and Central America? The same. Why you don't want to see the refugees from Central America or South America or the Caribbean in United States. Okay, what was the role of the United States in Latin America? The role of the United States in, the, in Latin America and Central America and Caribbean was support the coup d'etats. Just Haiti, for a small example. Haiti, two times invaded, two times coup d'etats against the John Bertrand Aristide, a president who was trying to make some social changes inside Haiti. And no, France and United States support the coup d'etat. The president, Juvenal Mose, who was trying to, be, to make some changes, social changes, economic changes in, in Haiti, he was assassinated last year. Mercenaries, and a, 
hired by a military corporation in, in Florida to kill the president of Haiti. Ah, but you don't want to see the Haitians here in the United States. You don't want to see them crossing the Rio Grande or Rio Bravo to come here. No, 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 you don't want to see the Haitians here. But who was behind the assassination of the president? Who was behind the coup d'etat against Haiti? And the same in Guatemala. Who was the president, Jacob Arbenz? A man who was trying to make social changes in Guatemala. And United Fruit Company, at that time was the name, created a coup d'etat against Jacob Arbenz. And the poverty in Guatemala is enormous. A country that, like the African country, very rich. The countries are rich, but the people are very poor. Why? And that's the explanation. And ah, but you don't want to see the immigrants in the United States because they came here to take off your job and everything. No, they came here because we made miserable the lives of them. Look, Colombia, the war on drugs. Here, I never seen in the news a cartel of drugs here. It looks like the coca came to the United States and disappeared in the noses of many Americans, but nobody's arrested, nobody, no cartels, the bankers who keep the money from the narco traffic, nothing, just uh, some pennies of the penalty, no more. Ah, but Colombia bombing, send troops, uh, agents, people in jail, massacres, etc. And it's a problem that is not for the Colombian people problem. It's the problem is here where the, the people are using the drugs, consume the drugs, and not in Colombia. It's here. Ah, but the war is there. And many money and many guns and weapons there. When it's a social problem, it's an economic problem. No military problem. But who is the winner in this war against drugs? The military industrial complex again. And that's why President Eisenhower many times say that he was not in favor of the, the give more power to the military industrial complex. Because he knows, he was a general, he knows the war. He knows what was behind the interest to take control of the government, and right now they are in control of everything. That's the, the sad situation with, with the coup d'etats in Latin America. And you see here the immigrants, you, you see the refugees, but they came, it's because you destroy their lives and their countries. You support the plan Lasso, you support the plan Condor, coup d'etats, massacres, the, the, the coup d'etat against President Allende in 1973, September 11, 1973. And you don't want to see the immigrants here. That's the consequence of the wrong foreign policy. I warned that the trial against the president, or former president Donald Trump, will be a boomerang effect. And you see, right now, he's first in all polls. And probably he will be president again. And because that I call this is a, a lawfer, produce negative results, the contrary effect, the boomerang effect. And right now, the people who want to see him outside the office of the running to be president, he's now winning in all states. That's the mistake of the political analyst inside the Democratic Party, probably, <coughs> or the mass media, that use the wrong way to win the elections against this guy. Innocent or no, 
that's the justice who know the trial who need to say it is true or not. But I believe was a big mistake and produced a boomerang effect. That is the same boomerang effect the NATO produces with Russia. Now Russia, the economy is better. The dollar is falling. Nobody wants to make investment in the United States or Europe because they know if one day they are unhappy with something, they will take the money. What investor will go to Europe or United States to make investment when you know that one day they are not happy, they will take the money and they will say, no, you lose everything. Nobody. Nobody. Oh, you cannot use anymore the dollar. Okay, I will use my own currency. That's happened right now. And that's the situation. Next program will be about the UFOs, or right now they call WAPs, the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. We call it in Spanish OVNIs, the OVNIs, Objeto Volador No Identificado. Why is important this topic? Because many people say before, no, the OVNIs, the UFOs no exist. Okay. If no exists, why we have a law right now in the United States signed by President Biden in December? He recognized, the government recognized, exist some uh, devices, uh, spacecrafts that are not produced in the planet Earth. Why they have a secret meeting last week, a commission of the Senate who is investigating these phenomena? why they have a secret meeting. And the conclusion was they probably they have bodies from, no, are not from, from the human beings. But the big media, the mainstream media, pff, silent about the topic. Like they keep silent about the situation of Gonzalo Lira, they keep silent about the situation in Ukraine, they keep silent about the situation of the General Lloyd Austin. Nothing. Days before, the telescope of Arecibo in Puerto Rico was destroyed because some big device fall on the plate and was destroyed. Days before, this picture that you can see here was released by a worker inside the Arecibo telescope. And what is that? The NASA? Don't say anything. It looks like a spacecraft, not precisely from the planet Earth. And days after the Arecibo was destroyed, when China was with interest to help to reveal the Arecibo telescope, and Puerto Rico expressed the interest to make a reconstruction of that telescope. Happened the strange accident, a big device fall on the plate and what destroy everything. And they don't have interest to recover the Arecibo telescope. What is the reason? That's all for today. Thank you for attending this first program after a long break. I think we have many topics to talk, and next time the topic will be the UFOs, the WAPs, the OVNIs. And, of course, if something is happening around the world with the topic of human rights or uh, conflict, it will be part of this program. Thank you so much. My name is Juan Carlos Vallejo, and have a beautiful, a beautiful day.